Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and today is November 18th, 2020, and I am going to start my completed finishes for the month of November. quilters I'm going to talk about Cleopatra maybe toward the end of this video because I'm still working on it uh, right now I do have all 36 blocks sewed but I will talk about that and add a picture maybe at the end what I want to do today is take you outside and show you some customer quilts that I have done some different type of work on <laughs> and I thought that I would show you that because I will be dropping it off tomorrow so let's go outside Hi quilters, so I'm outside on my deck and we're actually going to be moving in the opposite direction today. We're going to be going that way. <laughs> uh, and that's because I put these quilts up because of size on my deck. But um, I'm going to show them to you in the order that I actually worked on them. So, behind me is a quilt that I did not quilt. The four year old quilter that I always tell you all about. I'm so fascinated with all the things that she gets done. Back in her day, she was an what you would call an expert quilter, and everything was always matching. Uh, points match, colors were awesome, designs are awesome. So she had this quilt that she had given to her son and daughter-in-law, and it wasn't intended as a bed quilt when it was gifted, but she ended up wanting to have the quilt extended. So. She gave me uh, fabric for the top, the backing, and she gave me batting that matched what she had inside. And then I also, she took the binding off about three inches around the sides and the bottom so that I could add the pieces on and quilt it and then get it back to her. So I just wanted to show you what we came up with. <laughs> So we're going to tilt down so you can see the bottom of the quilt. I actually added that green piece on and it's a little bit different than the top as far as density because it has to be washed. So it hasn't been washed yet. But she's going to hand sew the binding back onto the quilt top there. And So guys, I ran out of battery so we're going to start this second portion again. Um, I wanted to zoom out so you can see the entire quilt it's made with k facet fabrics and she designed it more like a log cabin -y kind of setting with her particular uh, fabrics um, but what i did on the bottom was that i added the bottom piece of fabric onto the front and the back and then i also quilted that then i had to cut binding to connect back to the existing binding that was already there and then I sewed it onto the front of the quilt and then I use an iron and I pressed it to the back of the quilt and my customer is going to hand sew that part on so I just wanted you to see that particular work there and hopefully you can see it um, the design that I stitched and the bottom fabric is a little bit stiffer than the other fabric so I'm hoping that it washes up very well so let me just show you the backing even though I did not piece this entire quilt you all like to see the back so here's the back it's a little bit difficult for me to show today but I added my seam um, right here in this area is where I added the piece back on so you can barely tell on the back but um, couldn't find the exact green fabric that was in the quilt top so ended up substituting this and the thing is it really doesn't matter what was quilted on this or how it was quilted because um, 
it's going to be at the foot of the bed and so it won't be seen anyway but just thought that I would share that with you let's go on to the next quilt so we're having um, again we're having the wind blowing and things like that and we're kind of getting shading on the quilt top not exactly sure where it's coming from maybe it's the quilt next to it but this is a kaleidoscope quilt and it's made with um, 60 degree points in the end but they're like 30 degree wedges and I actually quilted this and it's very difficult to see the quilting on this I used teal thread that matched in the center and I just pieced this Oh, I quilted this actually into each of the actual wedges backing fabric she used maybe you can see a little bit more I'm, in, I'm getting my shadow here see if I can move this way but here's how it's looking on the back I kind of used like a butterfly in it since she had butterflies right here so I actually quilted um, 12 of those no six of those butterflies because I uh, she had 12 wedges at 30 degrees and what I did was I quilted it in 60 degrees so custom quilted I also made the binding sewed the binding to the front and hand sewed it to the back so she wouldn't have to worry about how to get around these corners since I pieced it on and this one here is a 45 degree kaleidoscope that's really flopping in the wind and again very pretty she fussy cut all of these fabrics just very nicely done try to see if I can go back and get a full view now that the wind has stopped but that's the second kaleidoscope quilt and this one I did quilt in the 90 degree increments if I'm not mistaken <laughs> And you can see the back on this is very busy. So you can't see a whole lot of the quilting on this one. But I did use a metallic thread and I'm hoping that it shows up that it's metallic. She wanted metallic thread on this one. It quilted up really nice on my gamel. I didn't have to make any accommodations for it. But I'm not really sure if it's showing up on film. So that's going to be it for this segment. We'll come back when I get more quilting done. Hi guys, I'm back with a couple of quilting projects that I've done for customers. I also quilted a quilt for me, which I'll add at the end of this video. But I wanted to come and show you these two quilts. This customer gave me eight quilts. Two of them I think she wanted by Christmas. So therefore I am showing you these two before I go drop them off later today she made a mini exploding star which is my quilt pattern you actually have four combinations to get you started on this in my pattern it's a $12 pattern available on my YouTube channel I'll put a link up at the eye above and products on my tquilts.com website www.tquilts.com and you can get the pattern there just scroll down the page but here she made one in yellow and blue I have made this one in my pattern in yellow and purple so it's a very pretty pattern and the way that I tell you how to construct it makes it easier <laughs> it is a time-consuming thing you've got to make sure all of your half square triangles are turned the right directions but you've got to make this into a miniature you can make it into a king-size quilt you have your choice but this is her quilt top I use the panto simple stars and loops and for her backing she chose a yellow I'm hearing things so I'm keep looking to see what's going on she chose a yellow um, backing fabric with some blue flowers they're pretty well yellow and blue flowers so that is this cool top right here uh, if you make it according to the instructions it's 20 inches square her quilts a little bit bigger because I noticed that some of her she sews a smaller one quarter inch seam and I know she was working on my machine over the summer so that could be it she's gotten the quarter inch seams a little off the next quilt 
that I quilted for her. It's this Christmas quilt. And she just wanted this one for herself to put out on the sofa at home. But I wanted to come show you the panto. I think it's called um, Christmas trees, simple Christmas trees, edge to edge. I'm not really sure. I have to find the name for you guys. Um, I can't remember that all the time. But I used a green thread here so you can see some of the popping in the borders. Got trees and stars. And it's just an all over panto. Very pretty. Nice texture. Took a while to stitch out. And right here I've got an area where my thread broke and I need to pull these uh, threads to the back and knot them and then put them inside the quilt. And here is a backing fabric so you can't really see the quilting on here very well because it's a busy back but I had that in my stash and I just donated that to her. She has given me um, various quilt kits and everything over the years just saved her some money from having to buy backing fabric. So there we have it for right now. Of course we'll come back with the end to this video. Today guys we're dealing with kind of a little bit sunny and then overcast day here so the pictures are going to reflect that as well. I'm showing you a disappearing nine patch made with uh, a print that has cow jumping over the moon <laughs> which is kind of cute and on this one I used the cool beans quilting panto let me take you up closer so you can see and it's just various squares and rectangles so not a whole lot of interesting quilting here but I do like the texture that it gives and then on the back she just used this batik and I think you can see the quilting on the front so you don't need to see it on the back but there we go with the quilting so we're gonna go on to quilt number two so this quilt here is also a disappearing nine patch it also belongs to a customer which the first quilt does too uh, her name is Carol I have a total of four quilts I'm going to show you in this section I think I showed you two in the previous section of this video um, but this right here uh, has flowers and I ended up using the daisy and dots panto for this one so let's take you up closer so you can see very pretty panto very simple but very effective so I really like this I wouldn't have used this otherwise if it wasn't for this um, background fabric but I think it'll make a great texture floral print so it's going to be one of my go-to uh, pieces and the backing on this is piece so let me see if I can flip some of it up move this back a little bit so you can see some of it <laughs> For some reason, my camera is standing crooked today. As I said, it's kind of a piece backing, so you won't see the entire quilt backing, but I'll try to show you some of it. And then she even has like additional piecing here just to get it to be of size. So that's the back of the quilt here. I think you can see the quilting better on the front than the back, personally. <laughs> so we shall move on to quilt number three. Quilt number three is this one block wonder or using the stack and whack technique that I have on my video channel. I'll try to remember to put a link up at the top above at the eye above but very pretty fabric and I'm going to take you up closer I ended up using the desert rose panto to quilt this which disappears in here but it has the same shaping of flower as this one here it's very pretty can't hardly see the quilting and I doubt if you'll be able to see the quilting on the back either because it's so similar the print is very similar and the quilting just kind of disappears in here which is kind of what you want on a 
quilt like this because you want all of the kaleidoscoping to happen in the quilt. So very pretty quilt and I will show you the back. Again, it probably will not be a great shot. So as I said, you're not gonna really see the quilting in this either. And she did piece this one as well, but like I said, with the busier prints, um, you just don't see the thread and I used the uh, yellow thread to make it match. Now we're on to our fourth quilt top, number four for Carol. This is Scrappy Strings. It is a scrap club project that I still have not completed yet. <laughs> so this is one that I need to work on. But she did such an awesome job. She has inspired me to perhaps get mine done maybe earlier next year maybe. I can find some time. I got so much on my agenda right now. But I love it. The quilting panto on this. I can't remember the name of it just blocking me right now I can't remember all of them and this is my first time using it but I love the texture that it put onto the quilt top and the quilting just blends right in so let me take you up close so you can see it oh it's called trillium leaf that's what it's called trillium leaf came back <laughs> Yes. Very nice. And on the back she did some piecing. Uh, I don't know if you can see the quilting on the back. So there's the back of the quilt. She kind of made like a rectangle and then she added uh, pieces around all four sides so that it would fit. So we'll go on to our next quilt top. So by now, all of you all know that I've been working on Cleopatra's fan and I got all of my blocks sewn into a quilt top last night doing a live chat live sewing chat that I have on Saturday nights, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. <laughs> and um, I just wanted to come and show the entire quilt top because in my room it's so tiny I can't show it to you, but I wanted you to get a full, I wanted you to get a full uh, look at the entire quilt top and now I have to decide what I'm going to do for borders and the jury's still out on that right now. So, I just wanted to share this, so let's go on to my final piece in this month's completions. So this is my final piece in the November completions. If you remember in October completions, I showed you the quilt top that Kevin and I had worked on as a team. Well, this pattern Kevin and I had picked out so that we would have a sew along together, and he kind of got a jump start on it before I did because he had a customer wanting him to make a quilt and the pattern is so easy and so quick to do it's a tulip pink pattern but I used a different uh, charm pack for mine and I'll put the name of the charm pack if I remember on the screen but I did want to get it done even though we didn't do it at the exact same time and I wanted to uh, get it completed this year. I'm trying not to start projects that end up as long-term UFOs. So I just squeezed this quilt in for quilting in between all of my other customer quilts for the month and I have not had time to even trim this, finish the binding, nor put a label on it. So my quilts from October and November still are in the same positions as you saw them in. Most of them have been trimmed but none of them have the quilt labels and binding hand sewed to the back. So just wanted to share this. This was a very weird uh, charm pack or layer cake, shall I say, because it started out with these black and white geometric prints. And then it had all of these colorful florals. And then some of the geometric prints also made it into the 
pink and green and then it ended with these kind of lighter peachy colors with strips and also this brown that was included this was had to be for me the weirdest uh, combination of fabrics put together as I'm looking at this quilt quilted though I really really like it I can't remember the name of the actual panto that I used on this I will try to go up and let you see the quilting so I love the panto on this and this border print I found at also personal Illinois as well as that binding fabric it was on clearance section and so I got a great price on it and had just enough to finish off my quilt top but love this um, piece here on the back it's just really really simple I just used the white back in an off-white so you can see some of the quilting there and I used orange thread I'm trying to get outside of the box I'm not always using uh, the same color as my background fabric and it's kind of can be one of those quilts that can be flipped to the other side if you like as well it ends up about a twin size quilt I would imagine and uh, the border on this was not included in the pattern and if I remember I'll try to add the link for the free pattern i don't know how long it's going to be uh, free sometimes they have stuff up for a while and other times they take things down so that's it for this video guys i will see you all next time thank you all so much for watching please remember to like comment and subscribe share my channel with your other quilting friends and i'll see you in my next video bye bye t quilters stay blessed